everybody, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the banjo. We've done guitar for the last several weeks, and I thought instead of continuing with our guitar lessons, we got to sneak some other instruments in here so those that are not guitar players won't feel like we're, uh, we're spending too much time on the guitar. Um, we're, the process here is we're learning by ear. We're learning a melody, we're learning a key, we're learning chords, we're learning a melody, and then we're taking that melody and we're trying to create our own solo. Um, with the guitar we did uh, When the Saints Go Marching In, that was the song that I used for our um, example song when we did the series of videos on how to find the key, the chords, and the melody by ear. Um, for the banjo, I'm going to use a different tune. I'm going to go with Old Joe Clark for several reasons. It lays out better on the banjo in the key of G. And um, Old Joe Clark can be a vocal tune. A lot of times it's just played as a fiddle tune. Uh, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about the structure of this song, the way it lays out in an um, a, a part, a B part, and how those A and B parts can be uh, subdivided into different phrases so that when you're trying to learn uh, the melody by ear or trying to create your solos, if you have an idea of the song structure, that will be helpful all, all the way around. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so you would go through the same process that we did with the Saints Go Marching In to learn the key, to learn uh, the chords, and to learn the melody of this song. And I'm not going to repeat that because you can just go back and follow that information also, you can get my book, uh, Learning Music by Ear for All Stringed Instruments, from www.flatpick.com, and that lays out those specific things, how to find the key, how to find the chords, and how to find the melody. What we're going to do today is um, sort of look at what you're going to do with that melody once you've found it, okay? Um, when I started out playing banjo years ago, I had a teacher, and he would tab out the songs that he wanted me to learn and you know I bought some books and it, everything was tabbed out for me and all I had to do was memorize it but um, that went fine for a while until I wanted to learn songs that my teacher hadn't showed me or that weren't in any of the books or videos that I could buy uh, back in the day when I was learning how to play and that was a little bit frustrating um, how do I find the melody, how do I put my rolls and my embellishments around that melody. It was a little bit, um, it was a little bit tricky when I first started to do it. So I'm hoping that this video I can give you some helpful pointers that will allow you to create your own solo uh, for songs where you found the melody and you want to create your own solo or variations on that solo or eventually learn how to improvise around a melody. So that's where we're uh, uh, going to be talking about today. All right. So, Old Joe Clark, um, we're going to assume that we found this melody, okay? Um, it can be sung or hummed or whistled. If you don't know words to it, you may have heard it as a fiddle tune, and you can just hum or whistle these notes um, to find them. And so, there's several variations of this, this song floating out there and lots and lots of lyrics to the song. But the one I'm going to use sort of goes like this. Old Joe Clark, he had a mule. Name was Morgan Brown. Every tooth in that mule's head was 16 inches round. All right. Most of the verses to this are silly, and that's one of them. Um, that's the A part, and let's talk about the A part before we go on to the B part. Now, one of the things after you've found that melody, and maybe while you're finding that melody, a couple things you will discover. Um, first of all, when you go through and find the whole song, you'll find that it is the structure is A, B, or A, A, B, B. Sometimes when it's played as a fiddle tune, people do that. Um, also, um, you will notice when you're finding the melody, there's a lot of repeated things here. The structure in the, in the, in the book, I talk about a structure of a tune being uh, an A part as four two-bar phrases and a B part as four two-bar phrases. That's pretty typical. Of course, all songs aren't like that. There's variety in there. 
but a typical song will be uh, A, A, B, B, and each the A parts will be eight, eight bars, and making it a 32 bar song when you put it all together. And I like to divide each of those eight bar sections into, into phrases, and I call the first phrase the theme of the song. The second phrase is the answer to the theme. The third phrase is the sub-theme. A lot of times the sub-theme is identical to the theme. And then the last phrase is what we call the resolving phrase. Okay, so here's the theme to Old Joe Clark. First two bars. Now we're going to go to the answer to the theme. And it starts, the first four notes are identical to the theme. The answer to the theme starts out just like the theme and then varies at the end. And that's, that's not uh, uncommon, okay? Now the sub-theme, which is the third set of two bars in Old Joe Clark, that's identical to the theme. And again, that's not that uncommon. Sometimes the sub-theme will vary uh, slightly from the theme, but a lot of times it's the same as the theme. And then we have our, uh, our last phrase, which is our resolving phrase, just goes... Okay, so that's the simple melody to the A part of Old Joe Clark. Now, um, again, it's going to be helpful to know that we, what the theme is, what the, sub, what the answer to the theme is, what the sub-theme is, and what the resolving phrase is. Uh, because of fiddle tunes having so much repetition, that makes it handy to learn them faster if you can recognize uh, those elements, those phrases that, that are the same or that are similar. It'll, it'll help you out. So now in Scrug style banjo, what we're going to want to do, first off, is take that melody and try to fit our rolls in there. Some of our various roll patterns, we have the forward roll and the backward roll and the alternating roll as our three main rolls in Scrug style. And of course, there's variations of those things. You can hit different strings with the forward roll and the backward roll and the alternating roll. But the first thing I want to do is try to fit my rolls around that melody and see how I can, I can do that. And I'll take it probably one phrase at a time and see how that works. Um, and because some of these phrases are repeat, if I get something I like on one phrase, I can just repeat that same thing on the other phrase. Or if I want to have more variation, I can work out something else for the other phrase. But um, I'm going to start with the first phrase, which is two bars. And I'm going to tap that out. Um, Da, 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 da. So all of that up until that first uh, end of the first phrase, up until that last note, they're all quarter notes in this song. So you really can't fit your full roll in between quarter notes because your roll takes up three eighth notes um, if you're playing eighth note timing on your rolls. So maybe I'll just try to fit like a drone string, my fifth string, in between each of those notes. So that, that might work. It sounds a little bit repetitive, but it might work, okay? That might be the first pass at um, what you might want to think about doing on the first phrase of Old Drew Clark. Now, maybe if you don't want it to be that repetitive, we don't have to fill in every eighth note. And maybe in, in addition to our rolls, our most common um, embellishment other than rolls around a melody in Scruggs style is our, our pinch. So maybe I'll try it this way. So that gives me a little bit of variety and doesn't sound so repetitive. Again, that's going to be... I hit my drone sometimes, which is my open G. I did a quarter note in there. I didn't fill in in one space. And then I did a pinch on the second uh, fret of my first string with, with the, um, with the uh, open G string. Now right there at that last note, you could probably uh, fit a, a fuller roll in there. 
space there and you can fit a full roll. So now I got a little bit of a, um, a way to embellish that first phrase in the melody with a combination of a drone string, uh, a quarter note instead of all eighth notes, and then uh, my pinch technique right there. Okay? And then after that I did a little bit of roll and then I want to move from the roll into the second um, to second set of two measures, which is our answer to the theme. So let me see what I can figure out there. I'm going to start it in the same way because the answer to the theme starts in the same way. I can get two full three note rolls in there because um, where there's more space there. It goes da 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 So I've got space where I can fill a roll in there. So from, from here, so far I got I did another pinch as a transition between uh, the theme and, and, the, and the answer to the theme. Um, or I could just roll. So you could just do a quarter note, um, you could do a pinch, or you can continue a roll and then go into the um, sub-theme. And then because the sub-theme is the same as the theme, I can then just repeat what I did the first time if I wanted to. Okay, so now we're at the resolving phrase, and you remember that went. Now to me, um, just from experience, I can hear the alternating roll fitting nicely with that. Da, 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 da. So I can go. So now I've figured out a very simple A part to Old Joe Clark, and it, it'll go like this. So now we have a very simple A part to Old Joe Clark. Um, we could embellish that by maybe trying a different kind of roll. And with the first um, pass through, I was trying to remain really true to exactly where those melody notes lie. But you can sort of shift those around a little bit so that you can fit a, a little bit, maybe a little bit better roll or a little bit cooler roll instead of doing like we did before I'm going to change it around a little bit and go that to me is a little bit cooler um, the melody notes were shifted slightly out of place but if you get them close enough it's still going to sound like the song so again it's We could add a hammer to that first note. So then we could go. So I didn't do much different. Uh, then I did my first pass, except I changed the roll a little bit on the uh, first phrase. I added a hammer on, added a hammer on to the second of, end of the second phrase. I did the same phrase, the third phrase as the first. And at the end, instead of doing my regular alternating roll, I added a slide and a pull off. So you can see. Um, 
that solo right there was real similar to what I did in the opening of the um, of the video for the uh, A part of Old Joe Clark. So um, I'll have a tab that goes along with this video that you can look at for uh, both of these A parts that we worked out today. So you can take a look at it and see if uh, you can play through that. Next time we'll work through the B part in a similar way. We'll do a, a very simple version and then add maybe some more complicated rolls, maybe some hammers, pull-offs, and slides. And then that's kind of the way you would approach a Scrug style version uh, of this tune down the neck. Um, in videos uh, later on, what I want to do is also do a melodic version of Old Joe Clark, a single string version of Old Joe Clark, an up the neck version of Old Joe Clark, and then we can figure out how to mix all those things together. Um, I love the Scrug style. It's absolutely my favorite uh, way to play the banjo. Um, but it's cool sometimes to, to pepper that Scrug style with a little bit of melodic, a little bit of single string, maybe go up the neck a little bit. So we're going to create solos to Old Joe Clark learning all of those things. And the way I, uh, I like to approach it is, is figure out an entire Scruggs break, then figure out an entire melodic break, figure out an entire single string break, figure out an entire up the neck break, and then take the favorite parts out of each of those and mix them together. Uh, so that's what we're going to do over the course of the next few videos on the banjo. This is Dan Miller from Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine, and we'll see you next time.